Praise God, praise God. Greetings to you, listening line today. My, what a privilege the Lord has granted us to come your way to tell you the good news that Jesus loves you. Amen. Good to be with you once again this evening in the fellowship around the word of God to see what the spirit of God would say to us tonight. Something that we have not heard before. Amen. And on a day that we've not been to before. Amen. At a time that we've never experienced before. Amen. So God is about doing stuff like that. Stuff that we've not heard before in a way that we haven't heard it before in order to do something we've never experienced before. Amen. Glory to God. And the thing about God is that no matter how much we think we know, we still don't know. We still don't know. We're still growing. We're still learning. We're still developing in this thing of walking with him and, and being with him and knowing who he is in our lives, we're still learning and developing in that, no matter how much we think we know. Amen. Glory to God. But it's good to be with you once again this evening. Amen. It's a privilege and an honor. Again, fellowshipping around the word of God. This is Revival and Outspread, Mother Tucker Ministries. Amen. Extension of the work going in consistently in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And just thankful for the opportunity to be able to plug in and be a part of what God is doing in our midst, amen. Sunday school is taking place every Sunday morning, 4501 West 55th Place there in Tulsa, amen. Morning worship at 11, 30 a.m. on Sunday mornings, amen. Taking place every Sunday, food ministry happening every Tuesday and Thursday at 7, 7.30, 7, 8.30 p.m. Food ministry is taking place, amen. So we're Grateful for what, what God is doing. Thankful for uh, Pastor's mom and dad, Brian, Elder Rodney, you know, Paulus leading out in Sunday school. Of course, every Sunday being faithful to that. Appreciate that. Pastor Regina, of course, overseeing all and looking out over everything, leading out wonderfully. Sunday morning worship taking place. Glory to God. So we appreciate everything that's happening by the Spirit of God. Glory. Uh, this past Sunday, Evangelist Jody uh, ministered. I mean, if you didn't see it, man, she blessed the house, blessed the people, appreciate her ministry, appreciate what God is doing in her and through her, and appreciate her relationship with the body, with, with the ministry. Amen. And she was involved when mom was um, working in our uh, one of the facilities in Beggs, Oklahoma, as well. So we appreciate her and just the ministry was beautiful, and as well as Sunday night. As well. So again, if you didn't see that or get to be a part of that, it is there on Facebook. Again, appreciate the medium of Facebook to be able to capture these things as well. And then over Rodney, he's so faithful with transferring things over uh, from Facebook to YouTube. Just appreciate him so much and what he does uh, with that as well to keep us all in tune with everything. So really thanking God for what's going on in ministry. And appreciating the opportunity. Again, food ministry taking place every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. If you do need food or know someone who needs food in the Tulsa area, it is available. Amen. So we want to always make sure we make that known because that is definitely, definitely a part of what we're doing here is taking care of the people, taking care of those who are without and who need, who are in need. Amen. Glory to God. So with that being said, good to see you on the match of Jan. Sister Rachel, see you on the game. God bless you. Amen. Looking forward to the time of study this evening. I'm believing that it'll be a word of God for us tonight. I know that we're dealing with a lot in the world. Things are going on. People are dealing with different things. Different situations are happening. But what we're learning to do is be consistent in the things of God. To continually trust God regardless of what's going on. And and if you saw the title of tonight's study, we're going to talk about waiting on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Amen. We've got some good times of study. Good times of study um, during this time. And again, we say this is focused on us taking a moment to stop. You know, busy days, a lot going on. Taking a moment to just stop and to see what the Spirit of God would say to us and, and allow Him to direct us in a way that we can get some insight to keep going forward, amen, to move forward in Him and in His things and in His will for our lives, amen. So glory to God. With that, 
we'll pray and we'll go ahead and get started into the word of God tonight. Father, right now, thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your anointing that is present here. Thank you that your word declares you never leave nor forsake, that you're here, that your presence is here, Father. And I thank you right now that these airways are being captured right now with your anointing, causing burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed, Father. And Father, causing those who come through, even for just a minute, for to stay for the whole time, Father, you're causing lives to be illuminated and set free, Father, in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that your word is true in this situation. Your word does not return in this moment, in this time, Father. We declare and believe. We thank you for it. Have your way. Have your way. Think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, God bless you this evening. We're going to pick up tonight, and we're going to um, study on this, this waiting on Waiting on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Look over at Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. It'll be the one of the key scriptures that we use to pull out this for tonight. How many of you know this is an important time for us to know how to wait? Any of you ever been waiting on anything? Waiting on something to happen? Waiting on something to take place? And all? Yeah, that's what we're talking about tonight. The wait. Wait on the Lord. Amen. So Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. May God have blessed you to the reading and to the hearing of his precious word. Amen. I'm going to read that again in the Amplified Version. It reads, but those who wait on the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, will gain new strength, renew their power. Hallelujah. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising towards the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Amen. Glory to God. There is a reward for waiting on the Lord. There is a reward for waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. And if we know how to wait, we will see the results of the Lord in our lives. If we just know how to wait, to know how to wait on him. Don't get anxious. Don't get impatient. Don't jump out ahead of God, but know how to wait on him. Amen. That word wait, well, it just really means to wait, <laughs> to wait for to gather together, to look patiently, to tarry, to wait for. And the, the, there's, a, there's a deeper root of the word, especially in this passage of scripture. Um, it, it, it has to do with to bind together. And, and it goes in to describe it as like twisting together, to collect, to expect, to gather together, and just to, to, to be inter intertwined with if you will that that's what kind of stuck out to me that twisting part to wait how there's a there's an intertwining that takes takes place in that waiting that you're being intertwined and you're being twisted if you will into the will of god into the plan of god into the purpose of god while you're waiting in the natural Amen. You're not just waiting for the light to turn green at a stop sign. You're waiting on the Lord. Amen. You're waiting for his wisdom. You're waiting for his insight. You're waiting for his direction. You're waiting for his clarification. You're waiting for what he has to say in the matter. You're waiting on him. Amen. We don't we don't necessarily know how to do that with God, 
because we don't wait on each other too much. You got 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes. If you ain't out the house in 10 minutes, I'm gone. If you don't take care of that in 10 minutes, I'm moving on. You know, we give people 10 minutes, 15 minutes to call back. We give them a day to call back. If you don't call back, it's gone. It's over and all. We we don't we don't practice this type of waiting that the scriptures are referring to when it comes to waiting on the Lord. Amen. When it comes to waiting on the Lord, we we incorporate patience with waiting on the Lord. In James chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. That's the kind of stuff we, we integrate, if you will, patience with this weight on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. It is not normal. And, and that, that requires a renewing of the mind. It's not a normal wait. You know, you have a waiting period of this many days before you can take advantage of this opportunity. And if you don't take advantage of this opportunity in this particular time, then you lose that opportunity. It's not that kind of thing with the Lord. We are always to wait on the Lord. Amen. To wait on him and to allow him to show his plan to show his purpose, to show what he would have us do. Now, another way of looking at that word wait is how a waiter, a server in a restaurant, how a server in a restaurant, uh, someone who's waiting on someone, someone who is attentive to someone, someone who might be a servant to their, 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 their leader, their boss and all, and they're waiting there for that master, that boss, to give them instructions. Amen. There's a waiting that goes with that type of situation where you're not just out busy doing what you want to do. You're waiting for instructions. And while you're waiting, you are in work mode. Hallelujah. You're not just laying in the bed. Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes people get the, all um, interesting and make it like they're waiting on the Lord and they ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I know that's not, that's not anybody on this call. That's not anybody who will listen to this at a later time. That's other people out there, somebody else in another situation. But you, you can't say you're waiting on the Lord and not be about the business. You know, you can't say you're waiting on him and not be about his business. Your waiting is going to have to do with you doing his business. Amen. You're, you're attentive to what he wants you to do. So you're waiting, you're serving while you're waiting. Amen. You're praising while you're waiting. Amen. You're worshiping while you're waiting. There's something happening while you're waiting. You're not just waiting in the parking lot. You, you know, I need us to give a shift in our minds about it and stop making the things of God so natural that we put limits on God like we put on natural situations. And that's why when a lot of times we get we get impatient, you know, because God hasn't moved in accordance with the one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. And when he doesn't move in that vein, then we become impatient because we need that bill paid by five o'clock on Friday. We need it done by this time because we live in this moment of now. We live in where we are right now. And that's all we're really accustomed to is where we are right now and everything that concerns us. Me, 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 me. Everything to do with me right now. That's what we want address. And God is saying, I need you to step out of you and get into me. 
Get into waiting on me. Get into waiting on me to move on your behalf. Get into waiting on me to provide for you as only I can provide for you. I need you to get into me so that you can see how I can move on your behalf. I need you to get into me. Amen. He wants us to get into him. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him, not on you. We don't feel like doing a lot of things. We don't feel like doing, oh my gosh, we don't, we, we'll tell you in a minute. No, I'm not going to do that. Mm -mm. I don't feel like, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like it. We just say that in a minute. I don't want to, I don't feel like it. That's not for me. God ain't called me to do that. I don't feel led. That was a big one. You know, I don't feel led to do that today. No, that's not how God operates. That's not how God operates. He doesn't operate on feelings. Hallelujah. He doesn't operate on feelings. He doesn't operate based on how we feel. Sometimes we can be crying out to God. God, I need you to do this, God. Oh, God, I need you. Oh, God, I need you. And God sometimes is like, yo, you need to get up. You need to get busy. You need to do what I told you to do. You're not doing what I told you to do, but you're crying to me for something. I've already given you instructions on what to do, but you don't like those instructions. So you're crying out and waiting for other instructions. And God is like, I've already given you instructions. But one thing, I've given you my word. I've given you power. I've given you ability. I've given you this. So I need you to utilize what I have given you while you wait. Amen. While you wait, you're utilizing what he has already given us. He's given us some things to use. He's given us his word to stand on. You're waiting for the doctor's report to change. Well, that's okay to wait, but wait with his word. By his stripes, I am healed. His word declares, healing is my bread. Healing is a children's bread. Jesus healed them all. Wait with his word. Wait with the comfort of his word. Recognize you're not just waiting in a normal sense. You're waiting on the Lord to come through and do what only he can do. So we wait with his word. By his stripes, I'm healed. I don't know what the doctor report is going to say the next time, but by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. I don't know how my bank account is going to look next week or this week, but my God supplies my needs. He supplies. He always supplies. He always heals. He always delivers. And you know why we can say always? Because he's faithful to always do what his word says he would do. Hallelujah. If he did it before, he'll do it again. <laughs> Even if he didn't do it for you before. If he did it for somebody else before, he'll do it for you. He'll do it again for you. Because he's a faithful God. Amen. He honors his word. So as we're waiting, and the waiting might seem like it's a long time. How many of you know it can feel like, I, I know I got some hands that can be waved out there. You know it feel like it's a long time. God, you said you would do it. God, you said you would come through. God, I believe your word. You're declaring the word of God. God, I believe it. I believe, I trust you. God, where am I missing it? God, what's going on? Well, let me tell you something. When you feel that way, you're not alone. David felt that way. What did he say in Psalm 27? David said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, I would have fainted. How many of you got some faint stuff that hits you from time to time? Oh, Lord, I'm tired, Lord. 
I'm tired. Lord, I'm tired. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. Take it away. Make it move. Make it go away. We tired. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God can handle you crying out to him like that. He can handle it. Amen. He can handle it. And it's better for you to do that than to call yourself getting mad and stumping off and leaving God. I don't even know what that what that's about. You know, I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving this because God didn't do what he said he was going to do for me. Okay, Mr. or Mrs. Ruler of Time. Sorry that God didn't move in the time frame that you thought he should have moved in. He's kind of God. He, he kind of knows what's up. He kind of got the best plan. He kind of got the best, the best thing going. So if you call yourself going to be mad at him, mad at the church, mad at everybody in the church, just mad and going to leave and do your own thing. Well, as, as Ambassador Jan so quickly says a lot of times, how's that working for you? <laughs> how's that working for you? It don't. It don't work. It don't work. All roads are going to lead back to God. All roads are going to lead back to God. Your impatience in the matter is going to lead back to God. It's going to take you a longer time to come back around, but you're going to come back to God. Amen. You can try to do it a different way, a different process and all that. Go outside of things, try, try to skip around and skip over and go around and go. No. You're going to end right back with God, trust in him. Amen. So it's best to just learn how to wait on him. Learn how to wait on him. Times of discouragement come. They come to us all. My God, they come to us all. But we think this should be done by now. God, I've been praying about this for a long time. Two days I've been praying and it still hasn't happened. And some of us have been praying about things for, for years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, our whole lives praying about things. Want God to fix things, change things, undo this, fix that, re redo this and, and reorganize this and, and take this out and put this in and all that. We got so many directions from God. We, if God was a map, he'd probably be all stretched up all over the place. God, I want you to do this. Oh, but God, then I want you to do this. Oh, God, then do this. Oh, God, then come back around and fix this. Oh, God, then we don't even know what we want. But we get frustrated when it's time to wait. Amen, somebody. Amen. We, we got to know what the will of God is. Amen. Because if we know what the will of God is, that's a calm assurance for us. Hallelujah. That's a calm assurance for us to be settled in what God has said. If he said he supplied, as I'm moving in the seat to get more comfortable, we can get comfortable in that. He said he would supply. If he said he would supply, then I want to I want to be able to rest in that. Hallelujah. I want to be able to rest in what he said. And I don't want to look at the circumstances that are taking me all over the place. Oh, the deadline's getting closer. This is coming up next week. Oh, it was a month out, but now it's next week. It's due then. I don't want to be freaking out about all that. I want to be able to rest. And I want to be able to wait in what God has said. Because he said he'd supply. He said he would supply. So if I can rest in what he said, then I'm going to be able to wait. Amen. I'm going to be able to wait. I'm not going to need to go out and do something crazy in order to meet that. I don't need to go out and do something that, that puts me in a deeper situation in order to meet that because I'm starting to get shaky. I'm starting to get anxious. No, I want to be able to wait. Wait on the Lord. I want to be able to put my trust and confidence in him to know that he's going to bring to pass what he said he's going to do. That he is faithful to his word. 
Amen. If I got a pain in my body and it's excruciating pain and it's been going on and going on things happening that I don't understand. I don't want to freak out because I got the pain in my body. I don't want to freak out about that. I want to be able to rest and know that by his stripes, I am healed. That by his stripes, I am healed. That I can just rest in that knowing that his word is true. That his word is more real than the reality of what I'm feeling. Feelings are real. You feel emotions. Like I'm feeling right now, emotions. You feel it. But the emotions at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because God wants us to wait on him. Cry the tears. It don't matter. Cry. If you got to wait, cry and cry. Cry and wait. It don't matter. Do it. If you can be joyful and wait. Be joyful and wait. Amen. Embrace the wait. Embrace the wait so that we're not jumping out and doing things that, again, it ain't getting us out of having to wait. We still going to have to wait. But if we jump out and do something that is not in line, then we're just going around. You know, the wilderness was a three-day journey. It was a three-day journey. But it took the children of Israel 40 years. Hallelujah. It took them 40 years to get to it. You know why? Because they wasn't ready. God literally said in the scriptures, he said, I, I can't send them the short way because they'll be attacked by things and they'll become discouraged. And that will cause them to want to turn back and go to Egypt again. They want to go back. So he took them the long way because of what was in them. He knew that their patience wasn't very good. Even and we know the story. Even when God provided the manna that they cried out for, God, we're hungry, we're hungry. So God provides manna, miraculously provides manna. And then before you know it, they're complaining about the manna, that they're tired of the manna. It's just one thing after another. So, of course, the complaining kept them wandering around as well in the wilderness. They didn't know how to wait. <laughs> they didn't know how to wait. They were walking through the miraculous things of God, but still didn't know how to wait. They got impatient and complained against Moses, complained against the leaders, complained about what was happening. And how many times do we find ourselves just getting in this rut of complaining? Oh, this ain't right. Oh, that ain't right. Nothing to be grateful for. Just complaining about everything. My car ain't right. My house ain't right. Kids acting up. Nothing right. The job is bad. The supervisor makes me mad all the time. Ain't nobody ever doing right. The red light takes too long. The dog always wanting to eat. The carpet is dirty. All oh, the kids don't never clean up the house. I always. We can just go on and on about complaining complaining. And the more we just keep complaining about things, the more we wallow around in it. But if we can get in a position, if we can get in a position, if we can get in position of weight, embrace that weight and not lose it because we got to wait on the Lord. So we can see the full manifestation of what he's promised us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a patience to that. There's a patience factor to that weight. God, just let me be settled. Let me be settled in what you promise. Let me not try to make it something else. But let me be settled in what you've spoken. Let me be settled. Let me find my peace in your word. Hallelujah. Let me find my confidence in your word. Let me find who I am in your word. 
right now because I'm being pulled. I'm being pulled in direction. I'm being pulled in the panic mode. The devil wants us to panic. Oh, panic, 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 panic. He wants us to panic. He wants us to get into that mode where we panic or we just tear up everything because one thing ain't right. We destroy everything because this situation is not the way we want it to be. That's not the way of God, saints. God wants us to embrace the weight. Embrace the weight. Embrace the weight. Trust in him. Know that he is faithful to his word. He is faithful to do what he's promising. And if the enemy tries to come, which he does, when he tries to come, to distract you and take you out of the weight, take you out of your place. He said, oh no, devil, I'm good. I'm good, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, not today, not today. I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord. My peace is in waiting on the Lord. My joy is in waiting on the Lord. My everything is in waiting on the Lord. Now that don't mean I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be at church. Oh, you know I'm gonna be at church. You know I'm gonna be in this, in spending time in the word of God, because I'm waiting. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna be at home talking about I'm, a, I'm not gonna do nothing until I get this answer. I'm not gonna do anything. No, 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 no. No, I'm going all in. Hallelujah. I'm going all in. All in. You got the, 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 the praise and worship going? I'm praising. Hallelujah. I'm lifting my hands to worship. Not in the way of manipulation. I want to be very clear. It's not in the way of manipulation because here's the thing. The trying of your faith works patience. Amen. And patience adds to it. Endurance. Amen. You got to know how to stand when you don't feel like standing. Amen. You got to know how to walk this thing out when you want to sit down. You got to know how to do that. Amen. And how you do that is getting all in. Getting all in. Spending the time in the word of God. Spending time in praise and worship. Spending time talking about the things of God. You're doing this because you know you're waiting on God. You're waiting on the Lord. You're waiting on him to show himself strong. You're waiting on him to do what only he could do. You're waiting on him. So you know you got to be in position. Hallelujah. So sometimes position means you're, you're, you're sitting in the place. Sometimes position means you're raising your hand. Sometimes position means you're shouting for joy with the voice of triumph. That position can be different things. So don't get locked in to what that position looks like. The point is to be obedient and wait on the Lord. Because he's going to direct you. He's going to direct you. He's going to direct you. Hallelujah. He's going to direct you to where you need to be. He's going to open that door for you that no man can shut. He's going to shut the door that no man can open. He's going to have his hedge of protection around you while you wait. That you don't have to fear anything. That you don't have to, as the scriptures say, you don't have to fret yourself because of evildoers and those who are coming at you to attack you or throwing things at you in different ways. You don't have to fret about that. You don't have to fear about that. You don't have to freak out about that, that you are able to be calm and be assured, hallelujah, that the same God, the same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that that same God is at work in our lives. That said, that broke we'll see. Thank you, Father. Remember that the same God who raised Jesus from the dead, he is still at work today in 2023. He's still working. 2024, he's still going to be working 2025 and on 
and on because he's been working up to this point. He's going to keep working. The same God who raised Jesus from the dead, he will quicken. He will quicken. He will quicken our mortal bodies. He will quicken insight. He will quicken revelation. He will quicken what you should do. He will quicken that person who needs to be obedient to what God has told them to do on your behalf. He will quicken the mortal bodies that are affecting what needs to be answered, what needs to be dealt with, what needs to be assured. He will quicken. He will do what he can do as we wait, as we just stay in position and we wait. God, who do I need to call today to say you love them or say God bless you? Or who can I sow a seed to in their lives to just show them that I care for them? What can I do right now, God, to show that I'm in alignment with you, that I'm waiting on you, that I'm trusting you, that I'm leaning on you, that I'm relying on you? What can I do right now, God? Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Tell me what you want me to do. That's waiting. That's waiting on him. Hallelujah. Don't get stuck in the situation where you think, oh, I can't do nothing. I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. I can't do nothing. I can't do No. Get busy about the Father's business. Not trying to answer your prayer as much as being busy about the Father's business. What do you want me to do right now, God? I know I got a need over here that's bigger than anything I've ever seen, but what do you want me to do right now, God? What? How do you want me to respond in this situation over here? Who do you want me to reach out to today, God? Because I know I got my stuff going on and I got my stuff going on. I got this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. I got everything going on that I need answered. I need the yes, indeed, and God, you know, but I'm waiting on you. So what do you want me to do right now? Who do you want me to bless right now? Because everything I am ain't wrapped up into what situation I'm needing met. Everything I am ain't wrapped up into the pain of the situation that I'm dealing with in my body. Everything in me ain't wrapped up in my relationship not being right. Everything is not wrapped up in that. And sometimes we can get it twisted and make it seem like everything is just right. Oh, until this is right, ain't nothing going to be right. Until this is together, ain't nothing going to be together. Well, let me tell you something. You got to know how to do this thing. Wait on the Lord without that being together. You got to know how to wait on the Lord without things being like you think they should be. You got to know how to wait on the Lord when things don't look right in the natural. You got to know how to wait on the Lord regardless of what it looks like in the circumstances of our lives. Because let me tell you something, circumstances are not going to go away. It would just be replaced with another circumstance. I know that's probably a, a, a really deep revelation for you, but you're not going to get rid of circumstances. You're just going to have another one. So it's really best to learn how to wait on the Lord in the midst of this one. This one that you got right now, don't be looking over at somebody else and talking about, oh, well, if I had these circumstances, I'd be all right because I know what to do in that situation. Well, you don't have that one. You got yours. You, you got yours. And, and you don't know what to do in the midst of yours. So learn how to wait on the Lord. Amen. Each of us are, are given our, uh, as, as we, we kind of jokingly say in our, in our family, talking about our cervical abilities. Amen. We, we, we're each given and we're each experiencing things based on our capacity. Amen. The scriptures say that God will not allow. Hear that. In 2 Corinthians 10, 13, God will not allow. He will not allow. You understand that. He will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. 
So if you're feeling like you're facing something that's too much, well, you 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 must have misread the scripture because the scripture says that he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. Amen. So in the temptation, he makes a way of escape, even so we can bear. So God is not unjust. So you don't have a, so say, an unfair hand. You know, I was dealt this bad hand in life. Uh, I wish this hadn't happened to me. Oh, if this hadn't taken place to me, if this hadn't happened to me, I'd be further along. Or if this hadn't taken place, uh, my situation would be different. Or if I had been born over on this side of the tracks, or if I had been born on that side of the track, or if I was this color, if I was that color, all the kind of things that we can put as conditions for why we're experiencing what we're experiencing has nothing to do with you embracing the weight. We all have to embrace the weight. We all have to wait on the Lord if we want to see his will done in our life. Now, if you don't care about the will of God being done, okay, I, this ain't for you. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to you. If you don't care about the will of God being done, I, I, I'm, you're free. Look, you are free to roam about the country. But I'm talking to those who really want the will of God to be done in our lives. Those of us who are desiring God to be glorified. Those of us who are desiring his will to permeate every part of our being. Those of us who are desiring, though imperfect, we desire our lives to be for his glory. We desire him to be fulfilled in our lives. That's who I'm talking to. But those are the ones who got to learn how to wait on the Lord so the enemy can't come with the ticks and tactics of his powers to distract us from waiting on the Lord and seeing, seeing the salvation of the Lord right now. As David said, experience the goodness of the Lord right now. The land of the living is right now, isn't it? Amen. Right now. To experience the goodness of the Lord right now. So there's a promise to those who wait. There's a promise. And the promise is that he will renew your strength. <laughs> that he will renew your strength. That you can be exhausted. That you can be worn out. But once you get in position and you get in that place of weight, he renews you. He renews your strength because you chose to wait. He also said that you will mount up with wings like eagles. You know, the eagle's wings, the eagles are known to, 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 to shed their wings, the, the, the feathers, right? They're known to do that. They rub up against rocks and, and they shed the feathers and, and new ones grow, right? And you know, when, when, when eagles fly, they, they fly to a certain degree. They fly to a certain level and then they soar. I want you to let that sink in your spirit. The eagles will fly to a certain level, and then they soar. That means they ain't doing this. They are soaring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a mount up, an eagle's wings, and then you're going to run and not be weary. These are, these are the promises given to those who wait on the Lord. You will run and not be weary. I, I did a little run and I, I ain't going to never claim to be. I ain't run track. My daughter ran track. The scholarship and all did a wonderful job. I, I say she got the skills from me and I'm sticking with that, you know. But I mean, I did run, you know, in terms of that. And I would, I would run, jog or whatever from time to time, you know. But I know that running part, you do get weary when you're running. You get weary when you're running. I know when I would run, my little jogging, you know, moments and everything, I would I would set a marker in front of me. Okay, I'm going to run to that, you know, whatever. That, and I'd push it, 
you know, to run to that. And then if I still felt it or run, I could run a little further on down the road or what have you. But at some point, I still got weary, still got weary and stopped. Right? But he says, you will run and not be weary. That's supernatural right there, y'all. That's supernatural. That's, this is the reward of waiting. You're not just waiting in vain. You're not just waiting with no hope of restitution. You're not just waiting to be waiting. You're waiting because there's a reward that's tied in to waiting. Hallelujah. Remember I mentioned earlier the, 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 the twist and the binding element of waiting? That what's bound into waiting are these rewards that you will renew your strength. That that's bound in, that's tied in with waiting, that you will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings of eagles. That's tied into you waiting. It's in there with you while you're waiting. You're receiving the reward of waiting while you're waiting. You're receiving it, amen, to run and not be weary. That's tied into waiting. When you wait on the Lord, you're going to be able to run and not be weary. It's tied in to it. It comes with the weight. You embrace the weight. You're embracing renewed strength. You're embracing mounting up with wings like an eagle. You're embracing running and not being weary, and you're embracing walking and not fainting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you're able to put one foot in front of another. Oh my God, sometimes waiting is like that. You're putting one foot in front of another. You going, you going to work. You being in that marriage, you, you're committed to that relationship. You're taking care of your children. You're doing one foot in front of another. You're walking. You're walking it out. You ain't running. You walking this out. You're walking it out one day at a time. You're walking it out. And because of you said, I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm lining myself up with the Lord. God says that you can walk and not be weary, hallelujah, that you can get up again and, and do what you need to do today again and not be weary, that you can stand strong again and not be weary, that you can do another step and not be weary, not faint, not get tired, not get worn out, not woe is me. If I got to cook one more meal, if I got to say a prayer one more time, no, you can walk and not faint as you wait. Hallelujah. It's in there, saints. You, you decide to wait and you receive the reward of the wait. Waiting on the Lord, you renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. You will be not weary in well-doing for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, right now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this time. Father, thank you for this reminder of your word, Father. Thank you that you're settling it in our hearts even more so. The peace of waiting, the peace of trusting, the calm assurance of knowing that you're a faithful God. So, Father, thank you right now for the weight. Hallelujah. Thank you for the weight. Thank you for the renewed strength. Thank you for mounting us up with wings as eagles. Thank you for causing us to run and not be weary. Thank you for causing us to be able to walk and not faint. For your glory, Father. For your glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, lifting up each one 
who may be feeling weary. God, I thank you. And I say, embrace this weight, Father, new strength. New strength. Being received in the name of Jesus. Those who might have wanted to give up, that you're giving new strength. You're giving new hope. You're giving new insight in the name of Jesus. You're causing there to be a revelation of the weight that we can stand strong in you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray you got something out of this tonight. I believe that you did. I know I got something out. The word of God is sharp. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. So I know it's, it's getting me. It's getting you. It's getting us all. It's finding us and helping us, helping us to do this thing better in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if you desire to give, you can give. Cash app is dollar sign MT Ministries. If you want to give via PayPal, it's info at drgracetucker.com. You can give online at www.mothertuckerministries.org. You can mail it in the P.O. Box 773, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. And we're located at 4501 West 55th Place in Tulsa, 74107. Sunday school, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. As his mom and dad, Brian, Elder Rodney, Elder Paulus, just doing a wonderful job leading out there. Shout out Sister Tasha, Sister Cynthia, Sister Crystal, um, just the blessed ones who are partial to Sparkle. Just a shout out to the faithful one, Sister Stephanie, just a different one, just so faithful. Mother Han, Mother Aura, just appreciate each of you in your faithfulness in the ministry there. Glory to God, Sunday mornings, 1130, Pastor Regina, of course, leading out doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Appreciate everything she does in ministry, beautiful songs, writing, just all of that. Just appreciate her so much. And just shout out to uh, Pastor C.E. and Dolly, they kick in and do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Appreciate the labor in the vineyards, amen, that they are ready and willing to jump in and do. Appreciate them so much, amen. Appreciate um, Administrator Diana, Ambassador Jan, anyone involved in ministry, just appreciate you so much and what God is doing. Food ministry is taking place Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. If you need assistance there, Please make sure you know it's available for you. And then also, if you know people who want to volunteer to be a part of the ministry happening there, hey, all help is needed at all times. If you want to volunteer your time, volunteer to help, please feel free to do so. You can reach out uh, to do that on Facebook. You can message us there if you want to be a part and be a blessing there. We definitely would be grateful for that. Amen. Well, glory to God. We well, appreciate each one that tuned in tonight. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I see uh, so my Ambassador Jan on. I see, I believe my niece, Dia, has jumped on as well. God bless you, Sister Dia. Love you so much. Amen. Brother Mark McGriff, man of God, being faithful to the things of God. Amen. I believe Sister Jody might be on. God bless you, Sister Jody. Again, enjoyed you this past Sunday. You preach. You're a preaching machine. Appreciate your ministry. Amen. Um, Sister Rachel, God bless you. My co-worker jumped on again. Just appreciate each one that came on. Uh, Sister Betty Wilson, God bless you. Each one that came on. And Lisa, amen. I don't know if you're still on, but God bless you. Lisa, if you're still on as well, wonderful niece, my niece, sister, call us. 
and he's all that. But God bless you all. Let me pray this missile prayer. God bless you for joining in this evening. Father, right now, thank you for those that have joined in tonight. Father, thank you that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you, Father. Your word declares, Father, we thank you, Father, for ministry taking place in the hearts and minds of your people, that you're the God who heals bodies. You're the God who saves souls. You're the God who provides needs. You're the way maker, miracle worker. So, Father, we thank you right now that you're intervening on behalf of your people. You're intervening, Father, in the name of Jesus, causing situations to be changed, even for taking time to be a part of this study tonight. Situations are changing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you till we come together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, saints. We'll see you next time till we come together again, loving one another and exalting Jesus. God bless you.